Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 8 of the course that's professional communication for managers and session 8 is a very interesting topic for all the budding managers which is on business presentations. So, dear learners, by the end of this session, you will be able to understand that what we mean by business presentations, how to go on for planning our presentation, how to handle different type of audiences, what should be the seating arrangement and many such points in this regard. So now, I will start my session with the topic, with the meaning that what we mean by business presentation giving something to someone formally that talks about somewhere presentation or rather business presentation because I have added the word formal. Not just this, in fact a business presentation tends to convey information from one speaker to the other one. Also, when we talk about presentations, they are typically the demonstrations, introduction, lecture, speech and different such forms. When I say presentation, it is more about when you address a group, when you talk to masses, when you talk to a particular group, a predefined group. This is what I am going to discuss in this session that how to go on for this and what strategies you should make for yourself. Before moving forward, I just want to tell you that every presentation is going to have three basic elements irrespective of that whether you are giving a sales presentation or a marketing or an HR any presentation. It is going to have these three basic elements for sure. There is going to be a presenter who is going to present his or her thoughts in front of the audience and the second part. As I said, the audience needs to be there. If there is no audience, then to whom I am giving my presentation? And the third and the most important thing, yes, there is a presenter, there is an audience, but at the same time, you need to have some content, some information which you want to share. Now, before moving further in this regard, I just want to bring a very important thing in your notice. There are two terms that is public speaking and presentations. Many a times people tend to merge these two terms but there lies a difference. When we talk about public speaking it is different from business presentations in many regard. The very first point which I want to highlight here is that public speaking is more of a spontaneous reaction. Whereas when we talk about business presentations, it is a predetermined planned effort. Not just this, in fact, you will be finding that public speaking can be done in formal or informal way. In the formal way or in the informal way. Whereas when we say business presentation, you will be finding that it is a formal offering. It needs to be done in a formal setup with a formal mindset, with a formal attire. Everything needs to be formally planned. Also in this regard, when we talk about public speaking, the audience, it can be masses. It can be that you don't know the people who are sitting in the audience. But when we talk about presentation, that is a very specific audience you will be having and you know the traits, the competencies, the pers personalities, not again that individual type of I am talking about. But yes, when I say business presentation, 
you know that what is their designation, what work they are doing, what are their competencies and so on. So, that is why I have written here defined set of people. In business presentations, you know who is going to be your audience. With this one more thing that when we talk about public speaking, do not have a common vested interest that is the audience and the speaker. Yes, a speaker is there, he is having his own motives and he is trying to put his point across, but might be possible the audience they are having some other interest, they are not at all interested in terms of uh, their benefit or something like that. Whereas, if I talk about business presentations, it is mutual interest which is being vested into the audience as well as the presenter. Last but not the least one in this regard, public speaking. Creativity can be added spontaneously, but when I talk about business presentations, as I am again and again saying it is a planned effort, predefined effort, pre-planned effort, then you should not go on for showing creativity spontaneously at the spot, no. I am not saying that business presentations should not be creative, no, do not get into this direction. What I am trying to put is that business presentations does not require spontaneous creativity at that moment when you are giving presentation. You should make your presentation creative, but it should be planned beforehand. So, that is how public speaking is different from presentations. Please do not merge these two terms together because there is a difference lies between both of them. Moving forward. I am going to tell you that how to go on for planning a business presentation. Now, it was a strategy 5W strategy which was being given by M. M. Monipoli for planning a presentation. First W stands for why? what, who, when and where. The very first point which you need to take care when you plan a presentation that why you want to give this presentation, what is your objective, your objective is to inform people, to motivate to convince, to persuade and so on. That you need to be very clear with. That why you want to give this presentation, what is your idea of this presentation, what is the purpose of this presentation. So, for that you need to ask why, that why I want to give this presentation. I want to give this presentation because I want to present a creative idea which can be beneficial for the organization. I want to give presentation because I want to present the sales figures of last month so that we can plan the future sales of the organization. So, see you need to understand that why you want to give presentation. I want to give presentation because that is a part of my course curriculum, fine. Because the moment that why is clear, you will be designing, you will be planning for the further stages. So, remember one thing that you should know that what is the purpose of your presentation. Moving forward, what? Now, what talks about the content aspect? Content, that what is going to be the part of your presentation? What information you are going to put in your presentation? What facts, figures you are looking forward to, fine. So, that is what first W is why, second is what, third is who. Who refers to your audience? Now, you need to take care of this also. You might be wondering that why you should think about the audience. Let it be anyone it can be, no. Because somewhere your what part and who part, 
they are connected i'll tell you how for example your audience are some illiterate people right now when you are planning your presentation you are putting all the content which is talking about very technical words very sophisticated words and that too you are using english language for that content does it make any sense no so that's why you should know that who is going to be your audience so that you can plan the content accordingly you can plan the things that's why that how i am going to move forward that's why it's very much required to understand that who is going to be your audience so that you can plan your presentation impactfully the fourth w stands for when why to worry about when give presentation any time of the day be it any time does it make any difference think about it yes it does make any difference because most of the time what happens take your example your school time example the very first lecture you people used to be very motivated highly motivated highly energetic but gradually as you are moving to your last lecture your energy is drained out might be possible the faculty is teaching you in a very brilliant manner but still now you are drained you are just listening since morning and now it's afternoon time and you are not able to focus upon right so as a presenter you should know that when your presentation will be scheduled at what hour of the day your presentation is going to be scheduled so that you can plan accordingly to generate audience interest i'll tell you again how for example your presentation is scheduled just after the lunch now that's a human tendency that's a natural call that most of the time people feel sleepy when they used to have their lunch so now as a presenter the more responsibility lies on your shoulder to make them awake during your presentation so might be possible that giving the same presentation in the early morning hours is quite okay at 9 am 10 am but the moment the similar presentation is being given presented in the noon's time it's not okay so you need to make more efforts to make your audience more interested right now comes the last part that's the where that where your presentation is going to be wherever it should be it should be in a small room or in a big room does it make difference yes it makes difference because we tend to use a number of technologies right so you should know that where your presentation is going to be so that you can make yourself comfortable into that environment with the technologies which you are going to use so that's why it's very much required so dear learners always remember that whenever you are going to plan a presentation ask these five w's to yourself before moving ahead now moving forward i am going to focus upon that how to deal with different audiences you cannot expect that all the audiences are going to be nice to you or bad to you both the ways right you do you will be facing different type of audiences so you should know that how to handle them the very first type of audience is supportive yes they are going to be showing interest in your presentation they will be somewhat uh, more supportive they'll be helping you out in making your presentation flow smoothly so for them what's your responsibility make them more participative right get up to their goodwill reward their goodwill somewhere you should go on for recognizing them that yes they are listening to you they are very supportive just acknowledge their efforts that's what you can do apart from that the other type of audience can be interested but somewhat neutral also now how you can deal with such kind of audiences ask questions to them again when i am saying ask questions that need not to be very tough questions or very very simple questions it should be linked with your presentation and it should be of same pace right average kind of thing 
so involve them try to involve them because such audience they are interested but at the same time they are nearby neutral so just to make them more involved more happy with your presentation use good eye contact ask them questions ask them to participate in some of the discussion which you want to go on for so that is how you can handle them next category is uninterested very clear to you you don't the, that the audience they are not at all interested and it's trust me it's really difficult the, uh, uninterested audience is more difficult more challenging in comparison to apprehensive as well as hostile because they are uninterested they don't want to listen to you so for them you really need to come up with some strategy wherein you can tell them that why and how this presentation is going to impact them next category of audience is apprehensive now when i say apprehensive apprehensive audience they want to listen to you because they are having certain fears in their mind about the issue which you want to talk fine now if you are going to confirm their fears then i am going to suggest you to go on for indirect approach but if you want to tell them that they are just fearing for no reason then go on for direct approach and make them happy that is what you can do right the last category is hostile audience now again it's very difficult to deal with such kind of audiences but again for establishing reputation with them adopt the in direct approach never go on for quoting any kind of humor with them because most of the time the hostile audience they tend to get very much aggressive if you are going to be quoting some humor they might interpret it in the wrong manner so never go with them by starting your presentation or creating a humor in between no don't go with humor kind of things with hostile people so these are the five different types of audiences which you can go for and which you can handle as per the situation now moving forward is about different seating style in the presentation room right now it can be one can be that it can be classroom or theater seating wherein it is again classroom kind of seating is there that many people they are facing the presenter right good one quite a good one when we talk about attention focused on speaker so that's that is giving a good good feeling to the speaker also that everyone is listening and everyone is looking at the speaker but and one more thing it is also good for the large gatherings when you have masses when you have more people right but remember one thing when it is about classroom theater style it tends to inhibit interaction so if your presentation requires interaction then i am not going to suggest you to go for this style next style can be conference table seating style right it can be like this a long conference table and around them people are sitting like this and the presenter is standing here again when we talk about for small gatherings it is preferred it tends to make people interactive right people can interact as you can see but one more negative aspect of this is that the presenter is left at the end and the people who are sitting here right they feel like as if speaker is way far from them so they are not able to link with them so that is just one negative aspect of this theater style but yes if it is small gathering you can go for such style apart from this another one is horseshoe shaped now it is an advancement over this one horseshoe shaped how i'll tell you in this the presenter was standing at one point but here the presenter can move along right so interactive this is interaction this uh, again favors interaction among the people and at the same time the presenter can move also so that is an advancement over the conference table seating style there is one more style which you can go on for that is cafe seating now when i say cafe seating so there will be small small tables and people are going to sit around the tables now such kind of arrangement 
is actually good when you want to go on for some kind of breakout sessions which you want to give in small small groups then it is okay if your presentation is about this but one negative aspect of this is that if a presenter is standing here then some people might be having their back towards the presenter which is not appropriate a person sitting here will be showing his back to the presenter right here so these are again when we say then in that case it is not a good way fine so i hope you are able to understand the different seating style and again if you believe that yes your presentation is more about the uh, going for breakout sessions go for this style i'm not denying that this is not good but again you need to understand that whether presenter needs to be involved or the people only needs to be involved more how it needs to work upon right now coming to the next part which is more about designing a presentation now when we say designing a presentation you will be talking about three different aspects that's introduction body and close right designing a presentation is divided into three parts that's introduction body and close now first i'll be focusing on that how to go on for introduction of business presentation now when i'm saying introduction of business presentation it is having again different stages different parameters different dimensions which you can focus upon in order to gather attention of your people the very first aspect in this introduction of business presentation is arousing audience interest and yes i'll be discussing in the coming uh, few slides that how you can go on for arousing the audience interest the second thing talks about that how you can go on for building the credibility with the audiences because again the more credible you seems to be then they are going to hear listen you more carefully also this introduction part talks about previewing your message so that you can plan the things and make the audiences more interested to listen to your presentation right now the very first aspect is about strategies for arousing audience interest what you can do to make the audience sitting interested in your presentation just think think for a while that what different ways you can start your presentation with now when i say that starting arousing audience interest right what you can do is the very first point when you start you can unite audience around a common goal common goal when i say common goal again that common goal should be for both the parties for example if you want to present give presentation on some uh, new product which is more sustainable product and which is again economical also when we talk about cost fine so before coming on before describing about your product before presenting your business plan you should try to develop a reputation with your audience by asking them that what kind of products we are looking for why we should go on for sustainable business practices what's the motive why there is a need to save planet so that's how you can try to build a common goal wherein the people they'll be interested ki oh this is my goal so he is going to talk about my goal only fine so that is what is required not just this in fact you can always start your presentation by telling a small story narrate a small story but make sure that the story it is linked to your presentation only because many a times what happens the presenters they know that yes storytelling is a good strategy and they start telling a story but when they finish their story and they start their presentation there is a huge gap the audience is sitting there they are not able to connect that how that story was linked to the presentation 
and if that linkage is missing then there is no point in quoting that story right so make sure you can use storytelling as a good thing but again if you are using storytelling then in that case you need to be more fluent you cannot read a story it should flow from your end next in line you can go on for passing around an example for example uh, you want to present a business idea wherein you are experimenting on some uh, new wafers right now before before telling people that what that wafers is all about before telling the marketing strategy before telling the pricing and everything provide a piece of wafers to all the audiences to go on for real time experience fine but again you need to make sure that it should not be heavy on your pocket fine so yes you can use such examples also you can pass it around and then you can ask that what was your experience what is how you find that what do you think it is going to be of what price what you think are going to be the ingredients so this is how you can start you can arouse audience interest into your presentation because the moment they are going to speak something about that uh, wafer they will be more involved because now they want to connect that whether their information was correct or you are going to tell something other than that next in line yes you can also go on for asking questions start your presentation by asking questions for example again you are coming up with some sustainable product so you are asking that okay how many knows about sustainability what do you think can be achieved by sustainability what are the different sustainable goals do you think that any other organization is going with sustainable practices all such kind of questions can be used by you and you can by this you can arouse the interest but again be very very careful when you go on for asking questions some people ends up asking very tough questions very very tough questions and the moment you go on for asking very tough questions your audience tends to lose interest because they tend to believe that whatever you are going to tell it's not up to my level so in that case you need to be very careful not just this in fact you can go on for sharing a very shocking news or startling statistic before starting the presentation as again i'm telling you that it is about uh, somewhere sustainable product so before coming up with your plan before telling about your plan you can quote some statistics from world un report or something like that world statistics wherein uh, pollution is leading to this much or we are not that much sustainable some other country comes on the sustainability development index more in comparison to india like this you can quote some shocking statistic which is going to again arouse the interest in the audiences and they'll be more listening to you what you want to say apart from this you can also go on for using humor but dear learners be very careful with this also because make sure the people sitting inside the room as your audience they are like minded people because when it is not the situation people tend to interpret humor in the negative sense right so make sure if you are using humor then use it very carefully so that you should not hurt anyone's sentiments so this is how you can go on for arousing the interest in the audiences then the major aspect is about strategy for building credibility remember we discussed about the first part of the designing of presentation first part was introduction in the introduction a is that how to go on for arousing interest b is how to establish your credibility now if you are a well known subject expert then it's okay then of course people know about you right you need not to establish your credibility again and again but if in case you are new into this field you are a new manager who would like to present your business plan so you are a new person in that case it can be again uh, two different ways either some other person comes to and introduces you 
or you take the opportunity yourself to introduce you confidently right and in brief you should go on for telling your credentials that is going to be a very wise way of establishing credibility or rapport with the audiences because learners always remember that people the audience they tend to make the impression about the presentation based on the presenter's credibility and it tends to happen in the initial few minutes only rather i should say that initial few seconds to initial few minutes majorly when we talk about first impression error right so research says that it is just 30 seconds 30 seconds to 2.5 minutes initial 30 seconds to 2.5 minutes people tend to make impression about you so that's the right time to establish your credibility right the third aspect of that introduction part is strategies for previewing your message right introduction is again you should have good table of content why good table of content so that you can tell your audiences that this is the way i am going to proceed you will be finding these things in my presentation and uh, try try to summarize the major part of your presentation in the initial few minute in the introduction aspect so that people should get to know they should get that yes i am going to get this from this presentation and they'll be more keen to listen to you not just this in fact you can also focus upon the key takeaways that yes this is the table of content and these are the key takeaways which you will be getting after listening to this presentation so this is again a very nice way of going for the introduction now coming on to the second major aspect of designing of presentations that is body of presentation when i say body of presentation then that's your choice that whether you want to go on only for direct approach or indirect as we have already discussed in the past sessions direct is stating your information directly or indirect is putting somewhere creating a base and then coming up with the information so that again depends on you that whether you should go for direct approach or indirect approach but make sure that whatever approach you are going for that should revolve around the main message that should be able to connect the main message now for that you can go on for assimilating your body of the presentation in different ways one way can be that you can go on for chronological order now when i say chronological order it can be descending order or it can be ascending order right so whether ascending or descending it can be anything for example you are going to present some figures some sales figures of your organization and you are just telling briefing about sales figures because you want to go on for planning or setting the plans for the future sales so for that you can go on for adopting chronological order that you will be going from sales from 1998 to 1999 or how you will be going or you will be going the reverse order from 2021 to 2021 22 20 19 uh, 18 like this so that depends on you but some order needs to be there some chronology needs to be followed not just this you can also go on for cause and impact kind of thing cause and effect wherein you will be first stating the cause of that problem then you will be stating the impact of that problem that this is the way this thing this problem arised also you can club this with the another approach that's problem solution approach you will be stating the problem and with the problem you will be telling the solution for example as i just said that you are coming up with a new business plan linked with some sustainable product so first you can state the problem that yes this is the problem this is how the environment is getting affected the planet is getting harmed and now you can come up with the solution ki that's why this product i am proposing because it is more sustainable it is going to solve the problem 
So, this is these are just different ways you can go on for a combination of all these ways for your presentation for assigning the body of the presentation. Now, when I talk about body of the presentation, there is one more very, very important thing that is holding your audience's interest. In the introduction part, it is again people are new to you, you are new to them, might be people are excited to listen to you. But when it is about body of the presentation, people might start feeling lethargic or they do not want to listen or they are just losing their uh, focus. So, for that make sure that your subject should be linked with the audience's needs. Try to anticipate audience queries, ask questions, might be possible the audiences are not asking the questions, but you go and thrash the questions on them. You want to ask this, you might be having this in your mind, so like this you should go. Use very clear vivid language, do not go for using sophisticated words, because if in the body of the presentation you are going to use too much technical words, too much sophisticated words which audiences are not clear about, they are going to lose interest, right. But if again you need to devise these strategies, still your presentation demands to use those sophisticated words. Make sure that you are providing your people with some kind of uh, pamphlet, some kind of written material wherein they can know that what is the meaning. Avoid using jargons some slangs, some uncommon words which are not used, regional words you should never use, elaborate the linkage between your subject and familiar ideas. Also you can ask for the opinions from your audiences and try to illustrate your ideas with visuals, with pictures that is what you can go for. Now coming on that is how you are going to close a presentation. The way introduction part body part is important, so is the closure part. Now before ending, tell your audience that you are about to end. Do not go and just you are saying quoting certain facts and figures and immediate after that you said thank you. No, always remember that you should give an indication to your people that yes now I am about to end. You simply can say that in the end I just want to quote like these, these are simple phrases which you can use that towards the end I would like to quote, in the end I just want to say this, I just want to highlight this. So what is happening? This is giving an indication to your people that yes now I am about to finish my presentation and in the end in the closure part restate your major points, your main points, reinforce them, right? because if you are going to reinforce them, people are going to take away with them. Also, also, if your presentation requires some kind of action after the presentation needs to be taken, right, and different people are responsible for different actions, describe those actions to them. Describing next steps that who will be responsible for which work, that is what you can go for, right. Also ending your presentation on a strong note with a very impactful ending. That is how you should go on for closing your presentation. Now another aspect that was about the designing aspect which covered the introduction body and close of a presentation. Now I am going to highlight on that how you can master in the art of delivery. You have the content in your hand, you know what to speak, but how to deliver it? That is what is again a very important aspect of any presentation, any be it a presentation at your school time or college time or in your corporate. When I say this, the very first point comes into our mind as memorizing, that we should memorize the whole presentation. Do you really think that it is right way of giving the presentation? No, because what happens is that when you memorize things, right, first thing is it is very difficult to memorize each and every thing for large presentation. So, it is a big no for large presentation, 
right and the moment you tend to memorize you tend to lose your natural way natural way now yes that's a nice way that you can memorize certain quotations certain facts certain figures but don't go on for memorizing or mugging up the whole presentation that's not the right idea of delivery apart from this another way of delivering my presentation is reading simply reading when i am going to read i am not going to make eye contact with my people and again when i am saying reading it leads to monotonous way monotonous way it is uninspiring right you are not able to connect with your audiences and the moment believe me the moment you are going to go for reading kind of art of delivery in the presentation people are never going to listen to you they are going to lose interest fine so yes make your own natural way don't go on for just reading again i'm not saying that you cannot make notes yes you can go on for making note cards but make sure the note cards should only have bullet points not paragraphs not sentences and the writing should also be clear because if you are not able to read from your note card then what's the point in taking that note card again one more thing when we talk about preparation of the note card it should be of somewhat hard material you can't take a thick chart paper to make the note cards and it should not be very big size it should be only of this much size postcard size is enough for making the note cards not just this in fact you can also go on for impromptu thinking or speaking what's that that is you are looking thoughtful although yes when i when we say silence it is not a right idea it becomes uncomfortable but if you do it strategically you look thoughtful then many a times yes it is a good strategy of art of delivery you can go for this so yes these are different ways of that how you are going to deliver your message but again see learners i have never said this that reading is wrong or speaking from notes is wrong or any way it is just you need to decide that which is correct because if i talk about reading if you want to share some technical information which requires specific language word by word and if you are not reading it properly if you are not reading it correctly then you are on the wrong track in that case you should go on for reading but not the whole presentation right i hope you are able to understand this point another very important thing which people tend to worry about us during their presentations that they become anxious so how to overcome anxiety that is again a very very important aspect of any presentation yes when i say overcoming anxiety prepare more material if you want to speak for 1 hour prepare a material for 3 hours read thoroughly practice a lot practice don't think that it is just and i'll be doing it no practice a lot because the more you are going to practice it will be helping you more out positive thinking is another right strategy wherein you can concentrate on your strengths also you can visualize the success before starting your presentation take a deep breath right take a deep breath you can drink a glass of water don't panic just feel confident within yourself because you know about your presentation the people sitting in the audience they don't know anything but don't believe that they are fools they are not it is just to make yourself more self confident that you should be speaking don't look for memorizing the things because the more you are going to memorize the things or mug up the things it is going to lead you on to the negative direction right keep going whatever you are speaking keep going it should not be like that you are stopping in between and losing your confidence so yes you can overcome the anxiety 
maintain a small smile. Yes, because the moment we have a small smile on our face, it tends to release the tension, the stress. So go for these strategies, for sure you are able to control your anxiety. Now moving further is again another good aspect, another important aspect that is handling queries. Because in the presentation, the audiences, they are going to ask queries, how to handle them. And it is also a very important aspect because you cannot deny, you cannot say, I don't know or you cannot just walk away after your presentation. You need to handle the queries. So when we say handling queries, focus on the questionnaire, the person who is asking the question. Acknowledge that questionnaire. You say thank you to that person. If you are not able to understand the question, ask for clarification. Tell him, ki, can, he please, can you please repeat the question? It should not be like that. Whatever you are understanding, you are going with that. No. Try to understand the body language of the questionnaire also. Fine. This is about that how you can analyze a questionnaire or a contrary or Again, in connection to this, you can also go on for responding appropriately. Do not just respond in a very reactive manner, no. <clears throat> do not ignore the questions or laugh. Many a times what happens, an audience, used, an audience used to ask a question and we used to laugh, we used to giggle. No, that is not the right strategy. In this manner, you are disrespecting the audience, you are disrespecting the questionnaire, you are disrespecting the fact that what question he is asking. So that is wrong strategy. Handle the things appropriately. If you do not know the answer, do not quote unnecessarily things. Never do this because might be possible that uh, people are asking you questions and some of the people there itself, they know the answers also. So unnecessarily you will be trapped. So do not go on for pretending as if you know the answer. If you do not know, say politely, sorry, I do not know about this. I will get back to you after this presentation with the answer and we will have a discussion, right? Not just this, try to control the things yourself. Why I am saying maintaining control? The very first thing is that you can establish ground rules. Ground rules means that uh, in the initial few minutes or in between or towards the end that what is going to be the way of asking questions. You can establish the ground, the, uh, ground rules for the question answer session. Make sure if people are not asking the questions themselves, try to ask people from other parts of the room. It should not be only from one group you are asking, okay, what is your question? No. You should try asking different people who are sitting at, on different uh, places. Also, do not get into arguments. Yes, surviving the hot seat because you are on the hot seat undoubtedly, but make sure that you are not getting into arguments. You are not uh, going out of control of your emotions. If you know that the person who is asking the question, he is just asking a question to pull your leg, let it be. You do not re give a reaction to that. You just answer the question irrespective of the fact whosoever is asking. Do not focus on that who that person is. Is he your enemy or he, is he your friend? No. Do not go for evaluating such emotional aspects when you are a presenter. Even if you know also, then just answer the question. Avoid heated arguments, diffuse hostility by paraphrasing. If you know that the person, the audience is a hostile one, try to paraphrase his question so that you can develop a better clarity about his or her question. That is again a very nice strategy to go for. But do not get into hostile reactions. Also maintain good posture, good gestures, even if you are being asked a question which is not appropriate by an hostile audience, do not look angry. Still maintain your cool, calm, composed posture, composed gestures, do not be angry. 
not just this, in fact, when we talk about handling queries, encourage questions. Many a times this happens that people in the room, they are not asking any question. So try to make them ask you certain questions. If they are not asking, tell them certain questions. Okay, do you want to ask this? Do you have this query in your mind? Is this what is coming into your mind like this? You can again make questions develop in the mind of your audiences. So these are some of the ways by which you can handle queries in a very effective manner. Trust me learners, you really need to look forward to this handling queries because many a times what happens, we tend to give a very beautiful and amazing presentation. But when it comes to handling queries, we fail there. We are not able to handle or answer the queries of the people, of the audiences. So that tends to impact our presentation. Now, moving further about planning your presentation visuals, because as I said that you will be using visuals, you'll be using PowerPoint and all such things. So how to go on for planning that? So there are six various stages, various steps, which you can go on for. I'll be starting with selecting type of visuals. Now you need to understand, you need to, you need to think that what kind of visuals you want in your presentation. Yes, these days commonly people tend to use MS PowerPoint and they are taking help of different electronic slides. So for that, you can also take help because that is again a good way of presenting your ideas to the audiences. Not just this, in fact, it is overhead transparencies also, which people were using. You might be finding it that it was an old school concept, but still uh, it is one of the most reliable one. Yes, one negative aspect is this, that whatever you have written, it cannot be erased and all. So that is there, but again, that was one very good aspect. For that, you don't need any complicated technologies. No, you don't need that. Also, one very effective and tried and tested way is chalkboard and whiteboards. These days, we do have smart boards also, which you can use for visuals. Not just this, you can take help of the flip charts, wherein you can prepare the different charts and you can just keep on flipping them as and when required during your presentation. Also, you can go on for screen casting. So see, these days we do have different ways of managing the visuals for our presentation. The second in this regard, I'll be talking about the structured or the free form slides. When we talk about structured uh, slides, they are more, you can say that the template of all the slides in my presentation will be having similar look. More of the content or the information part is going to be there on my structured slides. Whereas if I talk about the free form slides, they don't follow any set pattern. That does not mean that you will be putting the material or the information in the haphazard manner. No not in haphazard way. That is one very important aspect. Not in haphazard way. It is just I am using more of pictures rather than the content information for the free form of the slides. Now when we talk about creativity, yes, free form of slides requires little bit more creativity for the preparation. So this is what also you can go on for designing or planning your visuals that whether you want to go for structured slides or you want to go for free form slides. The third aspect is about writing readable content. Now when we say readable, it should be four or five words per line. Maximum certain times it reaches up to seven, eight, not more than that. And don't put too much of the content on the slide. Because if you are going to put too much of the content on the slide, people are going to read the slides, they are not going to listen to you. So put less content on the slide. Also use active voice rather than the passive voice. Because if you are going to use the active voice in that, you will be able to give emphasis on the subject. That is again a better idea to move on. Not just this, you also need to look for the font size and the color 
which you are using and how you are going to go for major shifts in your presentation. Now moving further, the fourth aspect talks about modifying the graphics for slide. So for that, yes, make sure that you are reducing the detail, simplifying the things, shortening the numbers. How shortening the numbers? I'll tell you that if the number is, if the number is, why to go on for such big number? Just go on for 1.003. Or rather, if it is required, it can be 1.01, 1.002, not big numbers, right? Limit amount of data that don't put too much of facts and figures. It should not be too much. If yes, it is required, it is the need of your presentation, I request you to please give some kind of supporting reading material to your audiences rather than putting every fact and figure on the slide. Don't go for that. Also, adjust the size and design as per the theme. Moving forward to the fifth stage, that is selecting design element. And when we say design element, color is the most important aspect. And yes, it is believed that it accounts for 60% of an audience's acceptance or rejection. Yes, the color decides, the color combination of your slides, the font style, it decides in 60% of the cases that whether your presentation will be heard or not heard. Also, it improves the retention by 75% if the color combination is good. Now, when I say color combination is good, that means on a light background, you should go on for dark color phone size. That should be there. Also, look for the designs and the artwork, but make sure that the background should not be too flashy, too cluttery, too artistic. Functional artwork is okay because that is required, but not too much of the decorative artwork is required because functional artwork is linked with your presentation, the figures, the points which are linked with your presentation. So avoid using more of the art, decorative artwork, go for the functional one, but that too up to a certain limit. Font size, yes, the rule says that you it should be somewhere around 30 points not more than that. Adding animation and special effects, yes, you can make your presentation more impactful by adding more of the animations. It can be functional animation, some kind of transitions you can add. If you want to add some information with the hyperlink or you can go on for adding some multimedia elements. So this is the way you can plan visuals in your presentation. Now, I'll just talk about quickly that how to go on for impactful presentation. See, dear learners, whatever we have discussed till now, if you are going to focus upon that, for sure, your presentations are going to be the most impactful one. Apart from that, remember just one thing that target on the audience needs, look for their need, what they want, and as per their need only, go for it. Be loud and clear. Don't shout. I'm saying don't shout, but you should be loud and clear enough to your audiences. Be passionate with connecting them. Make yourself more confident, right? Also try to maintain good eye contact. When I say good eye contact, that again tries to capture the attention of your people. Look for your formal attire, how you appear. Don't go on for making such some kind of negative gestures, negative gestures like this, right? Because that shows either you want to be more of authoritative or you are close to what the other person is saying. If you are, if someone is asking a query to you and you are standing like this, that shows you are close to that person. You are not listening, you don't want to listen, you are not open to the query of that person. So these are some of the strategies which you can incorporate and can make your presentations more impactful. So I hope this is coming to you. So dear learners, 
in this session we discussed about basics of the business presentation and how to design a presentation, how to plan presentations, also how you can handle the queries, seating arrangement, handling different audiences, what are the different ways in which you can put visuals, also how you can go on for making impactful presentation. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you and happy learning.